Yeah, completely. It was like uh, last year I was trying to fill in gaps that we don't have on a daily basis on our show. We have like a, we had a big bad, but not a daily antagonist. So, you know, everybody is very winning on our show. They're so great. Barry is great. Iris is great. Caitlin is great. Cisco is great. And I thought it'd be great if there was a guy who wasn't great, and that's what I was last year. To have a daily antagonist, somebody you couldn't trust, a malcontent, bit of a bitch, socially, yeah. socially inept. But ultimately, he's a kind of a good guy. Uh, he seems in the first season, he seems good, but he's bad. In the second season, he seems bad, but he's good. And this in the third season, well, I wonder what he is. Bit of a con man. But I thought instead of filling in the thing that we uh, that I did last year, there are gaps that we have in our show. And so in this season, I thought, well, I'm going to fill in that gap and do it sort of in the same way, be part of something that's not a circle that we have in our show. And But I didn't want to repeat myself from last year, so what I thought I would try this year was a guy who's a bit of a, he fills it up with comedy, if you will, or a bit of a, a, bit of a con man. Same element of can you trust him or not is, is there, but in a, in a different way. So it's kind of a variation on, the, on, a, on a theme, and that theme being where are the gaps and where can I plug in and paint some colors that we don't have on our show without repeating myself from the other four Harrison Wells's that I've done. We find out in this episode that he is a common because he's a novelist and not an actual scientist. Uh-huh. So can you talk about how that's going to change his dynamic Show, a superhero show works best with conflict large and small. So I'm happy to drop off these little like fire bombs here and there. And I think that's what that's pretty much the shortest answer to your question. It's like it's one more fire that they have to that they have to put out. And is it best to like extinguish it completely or to keep the embers burning, if you will? Last week we got a little montage of Wells from different <laughs> universes. Was that something, were they written specifically into the script or did you j get to create um, different Wells characters? Uh, you know what's great, one of the things that's amazing about this show is that the Helbing brothers, uh, Greg Berlanti, again this is my third show for Greg, Greg is extremely trusting, you know, and I think partially it's because we've, you know, we've worked together for a decade plus and so I think to let a guy go, I'm just going to, I have an idea what I want to do, you know, and then to let him just go ahead and do it and be comedic with it. If you d he didn't know me and trust me already, that might be like a very, well, he, you know, as a general rule, you know, you want to vet <coughs> the artist before letting the artist paint the canvas in your house. You know what I mean? And so, um, yeah. Yeah. What was your question? <laughs> <laughs> how much of those characters, those little brief snippets, were in the script, and how much was you just kind of goofing off and doing your doing your thing? I'd sent uh, Todd Helbing and I'd sent uh, Greg like a, one of the variations that you saw when I was trying to figure out what avenue the character was going to take mm -hmm. comedically, and because you don't want to. I mean, ultimately, I'm having a lot of fun, as you said originally with it, but. You don't want to upset the cart. You don't want to pull the carpet out from, um, from what we're trying to do. You want to actually contribute and have this element, in this instance it's a comedic element, be one that isn't disruptive to the story but actually aids and abets it. You know, I've always felt like like in the original Iron Man, um, even if you go back to like the Star Wars thing, like in, in times of greatest crisis there was there were moments of comedy between you know, Chewie and Han and Wherever you went to, to look, they had like they hadn't forgotten that making an audience laugh is one of the quickest ways to bring them to your side. So that's sort of what's what's occurring here. And basically, they wrote like you know the roughest schematic, and then I went to town. <laughs> and I mean, they they could release an entire episode with those four characters. I would say that the award for tolerance goes to Danielle Panabaker and. Carlos Valdez for sitting through, because they would just run the camera and I would just go. And like, so there's a lot of stuff that we couldn't use. Like the French mime was, you know, unabashed, the, the, you know, 
it was essentially a, a shameless day of performing that we cut down to the stuff that we could use and still tell a story about the Flash. <laughs>